Okay, to finish off this particular section, we're going to tie up our loose ends and actually enable ourselves to register a new user to our API via our account controller in there. So let's head back to VS Code and I'm just going to clean up the tabs at the top. And what we'll do is we'll start off in our account service. And what we're going to do here is something very similar to our login method actually. So what we'll do is we'll add a method to register and we'll just use the model and any once again that we're going to receive from our register components and then we're going to say return this.http.post and this time we need to go to this.baseurl plus account forward slash register and then we need to pass up the model that we receive in our parameters here and once again we're going to make use of that pipe method so that we can do really just the same as what we did in our login method because when a user registers we're going to consider them logged in to our application so what we'll do is inside the pipe we'll make use of the map once again and let's see if we actually need to give our user a type or is this method going to be smart enough to realize that this is a user object that we're setting here so let's take a look so we're going to map our user and it's not smart enough because it's just called this an object but anyway we'll continue and we'll say if user then we'll say local storage dot set item and we'll pass in the user and we'll say json dot stringify and we'll pass in the user object and then we'll say this dot current user source dot next and pass in the user and this is where we see a problem <laughs> because we haven't given our user object a type and we have given a type to our current user source so when we want to set this this current user source because we've given a type parameter to our replay subject observable then we're not able to set this to an object now an object is like the most generic type of thing that we can call something in JavaScript and it doesn't like it because it's telling us that if we take a look and take a look at the error we get in more detail which is something you should always do when you get an error it says the argument of type object is not assignable to parameter of type user and because we're using the current user source dot next method then it knows it's expecting a user object and not an object object and it's telling us that in our user object or our user type we have two properties the username and the token and the object type doesn't have either of those properties and that's why we've got the complaint so what we need to do is give our user object a type and we'll say and we need to do this at the map level for what we're getting back and we'll say that user is a type of user and the error goes away now I love TypeScript I love the fact that we get errors for things like that but when you're new to TypeScript this can be a little bit frustrating now I, I still haven't gone into any detail on TypeScript and I still promise that we will do but I don't want to cover TypeScript when we've only got two properties of any object. I want to give a proper demonstration of TypeScript when we need it. The cool thing about Angular is we can use as much or as little TypeScript as we want. If we weren't sure or we didn't have a type for this at the moment, then we can always use any to get around any problem. But because we do have a user object for this, then we will specify that. Or a user type for this, I should say. So now we have this in place we can go back to our register components and what we'll also do is we'll clean a few things up as well during this lesson we don't need that input property from the home component we also don't need in our register templates we don't need the select options that we were just using as an example in our home component also we don't need to go and get the users inside there that's not something that we're going to be doing inside that component so we'll also remove this code from in there as well and that means we don't need the HTTP client in there 
nor do we need the users in there either. And if we go to the home component HTML, the template, then what we'll also do is remove the input properties from the app register element here. And everything else we can keep in place is absolutely fine. So back to the register component, what we want to do inside here is we want to say this account service, which means we need to bring in the account service here. So we'll say account service and account service so that we inject the account service into this component. And then we need the account service and we'll call the register method. We'll pass in this model and then we'll subscribe. Then we'll get the response and we'll just console.log the response just to make sure it's working correctly although we will see this in the user interface as well and the other thing we want to do here is uh, cancel as well we want to close the form from this we haven't got any routing set up at the moment so we're just going to use conditionals to display and hide components a bit later we're going to take a look at routing and at that stage we would route the user to another component if we get an error we'll just go ahead and console.log the error in here and everything else should stay the same so let's go take a look and make sure that we can register a new user let's first of all log out of whoever we're logged in as and let's click on register and let's register as Tom and I'll stick with the password of PA$0RD and click on register and we can see that we're now logged in the form was cancelled we've got our options we got undefined as the response there from the register component so let's take a look at why that was we didn't need the response anyway but let's just go and take a look just so that we're completely clear about what we're seeing when we see it so in our account service register method we are subscribing to a response that we get back from this method whatever this method does in our account service, if we take a look at register, then what we're not doing is returning from what's inside this map. So even though we return on the outside where we've got our HTTP post, what we're not doing is returning from inside where we're projecting this. If we needed our user object in the register component, then what we would have to do inside this function is returned from this. Now we don't need the user, but just as an example, I'm gonna return the user so we can be completely clear about what we're doing from our functions. So if I go back to our register component, what we should see now when we register another user is the user in the console. So let's go take a look. And if I click on, let's just log out again. It doesn't matter the way things are set up just now, but let's just click on register and let's pick another name. And let's just say, for example, Harry and add the password and click on register. Now we see what we get back from the method. We don't need it. Like I say, we don't need to log out to the console there. It's just to be completely clear about why we saw what we saw from the response. And we also don't need to return the user from this. So I'm going to remove that. That's just an example of why we saw what we saw. So now we've set up the basic functionality to log in and register via our client application and we've taken a look at a few other things along the way as well. One of the things that we've looked at that you may not be completely clear about so far and please don't worry about this is what's going on here. We're going to be working with observables quite a lot and there's a very specific reason that we're using this replay subject for the user. I'm going to cover that again when we take a look at routing and routing is something we're going to take a look at in the next section so we've finished with this section so let's just take a look at our changes i'll just close all of these open tabs down and we can see what we've done in this particular section so what i'm going to do is just give this or stage all of the changes i'm going to give it a commit message of end of section five and then we're just going to commit these changes and push them up to GitHub. And we'll wrap this up with a summary.